What's up, everybody? What's going on? Hope everybody's doing good. What's up? I hope my audio is working. Hope you guys can hear me. Can you hear me? I'm looking over here because this is where my little monitor is. Well, it looks like I'm pretty delayed here, but that's okay. That's okay. I'll keep it rocking. Looks like the chat is working. Let me see if I can hear myself. Let me turn it on here. Copy. Check. Yep. Got it. Sweet. Audio's good. Got me a mic upgrade. So I can hopefully sound a little bit better. Uh, so hopefully I'm not as completely boring as I am most of the time. Hope everybody's doing good tonight. I uh, hope you guys had a good week. Um, let's see here. If, uh, if you have any questions, just uh, type them in the chat uh, bubble. The chances of me reading them and answering them are probably pretty slim because I'm lazy. And I probably should be more not lazy. I'm just kidding. I'll do my best to read your questions as I'm working. Um, and uh, we'll just go from there. If you've got any questions, just type them and I'll try to answer them. Maybe Parker might be here tonight. I'm not quite sure. I haven't heard from him. Let me see. Parker might be here to answer some questions. I don't know. But if you see somebody starting to type as Kingswell Project, that's more than likely Parker. Uh, all right, tonight we are going to draw the, what was I going to do tonight? Yes, yes, the Prince John. Prince John, uh, oops, didn't realize that I don't have my little, my little camera mode up here. Let me see if I can turn it on. I want to do video capture, sorry. I should have <laughs> probably been more prepared here. Video capture device, yes, add existing, create new. I want to do the web camera. Okay. Well, I guess I guess I guess can't do it. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, that's how that goes. I guess you don't get to look at my beautiful face while we do this. Anyways, uh, yeah. So we're gonna do the uh, Prince John, and uh, if you. Is this your, if this is your first time joining us on a YouTube live, this is just kind of me working uh, as I want to make sure this is on here. I don't know why. Let me see if I can get it working here. Check, 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 check. Deactivate, deactivate. Yeah, I don't know why it's not playing. I guess, I guess it's just turned off or something. All right, I might as well shut up and get to work. All right, so uh, what we're doing is Prince John. That's uh, the uh, the uh, ugly, well, not really ugly. I don't know what he looked like, but uh, he's the little brother of King Richard. Uh, King Richard went off to, to war during the Robin Hood. I probably should give a little backstory for nobody that's joined us before. Uh, I am currently doing a deck of cards based on the Robin Hood legendarium, if that's a word. And... Uh, and I'm doing it in the style of uh, uh, 11th century tapestry. Uh, also, I just rem want to remember, uh, want to say, because I have these uh, headphones on, listening to myself talk. Uh, I only have one lung, and I have <laughs> really bad asthma. So if I'm, if you can hear me breathing, it's because <laughs> I have one lung and I can barely breathe. So uh, that's that's that. All right, so let's get to it. The first thing I'm going to do is turn on my uh, middle middle lines. And I actually sketched this out. I was drawing with my daughters um, a couple of days ago, and I sketched this out on paper, and I guess it got thrown away. So uh, I had me a cool little drawing. So anyways, what I'm going to do is, if I remember it correctly, the King of Diamonds is a... Uh, king that is a traditionally a uh, 
B Dog asks, I noticed the recent cards on Instagram did not have the words next to the courts. Did you drop the idea? Well, sadly, uh, yes. I had to drop that only because I really wanted to put the words on there only because the original bow tapestry that I'm in, this is the, the inspiration for this project is, has like, it's basically like a comic book, 11th century comic book. And it has all the letters uh, in Latin. I mean, all the words kind of explaining what's going on in each panel. And I wanted to do that originally, explaining who who was what, but I just didn't have enough space on some of the cards, and I was forcing it to. I was forcing trying to 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 fit the words in there, and so I just kind of, I just kind of dropped it because it was, it was being annoying, and I didn't want to do it. So, back to the King of Diamonds. But thank you for asking the question. I'll try to answer it if you ask them. Uh, the King of Diamonds is traditionally a one-eyed king. He's got the you know he's the king that's like looking to the, the left, and he's got his hand up over here, and he's blah 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 blue. Uh, so we are going to do the same thing. Uh, he's going to be looking over in profile. I think I did the, uh, let me see, I think the Sheriff of Nottingham, let me see here, Sheriff of Nottingham, Sheriff of Nottingham, he's the Jack of Diamonds. Uh, that's not it. Uh, let's see here, I'll have to find it. Uh, but the Sheriff of Nottingham is uh, profile as well. So, uh, all right. So I'm just going to quickly sketch out the drawing. And then once I kind of get the sketch the way, the way that I want it, I will uh, then start doing the stitch work or making it look like an embroider. So uh, Prince John, obviously, he's the sitting as when King Richard is gone on the Crusades. Uh, uh, his uh, Prince John is kind of the sitting ruler. So I'm going to give him a crown of some sort, but it's not going to be as big of a crown. Let me see. I'll open up King Richard here. Let's see here, King Richard. Boop, 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 boop. Just open it up here. So here's King Richard. Uh, he's got a big crown. Uh, it won't be as big as this, but it's going to be kind of like a a smaller crown. A uh, cool little tidbit about King Richard: uh, this uh, arrow in his shoulder. It's actually a crossbow bolt, and he was killed in France by a boy that shot him. A French boy that shot him with a crossbow bolt in the shoulder. And they sometimes call it, because he was called Richard the Lionheart, and they sometimes refer to it as, I think it's the uh, fly taking down the line or something like that. I can't remember. All right, let's go. Let's do this so we can get all you people back home before bedtime. So I'm going to start with, he's going to have a very, I want to have him to have a very kind of ugly face. Uh... Uh, you know, I will not have any crosses on Prince John's thing. He's going to have, I want to make him have this really kind of ugly looking face, a really pointy head. And he's going to have uh, a very small crown. Uh, and then he's going to have this kind of really pointy head. I want to just make him like unfortunate looking. And then he's going to have like this really kind of greasy long hair, I don't know, and he's going to have this really greasy looking mustache, let's give him a little, let's give his eyebrows a little bit of a, like this, one of the things I like about this style is it's pretty forgiving, because I don't have to be really, because a lot of what I do is so like, um, uh, tight and you know like the Lord of the Rings stuff that I'm doing is very tight uh, so make a frown get a little make him a little bit more mad here because he is taxing he is taxing the peons the wee peasants of the land give him some bags under his eyes make him just really nasty all right that's good enough for right now just go on. Oops, need to erase, not draw. 
And he'll have some kind of like, this probably his hair or his crown. I don't know yet. I don't want to have armor on him necessarily because I don't feel like that Prince John, he doesn't do all of his own dirty work. He has the Sheriff of Nottingham do that. So I don't feel like he's going to be the kind of the good looking, you know, pompous uh, king or whatever you want to call him. Bring his neck down like that. Now, in the sketch that I did with my daughters that I don't have right now, which is sad. No, it's sad because I thought it was really cool. He had uh, he had one hand. He's going to have a hand up here that's holding a bag of gold, uh, kind of representing the taxes that he takes. And then his other hand, his cross hand, will come down like this. And he's got this kind of like wiry-looking dagger that's going to cross the midline. I always seem to draw these people's heads huge when I start out, and I always have to end up shrinking them. But that's all right. That's why we got computers. And we can... Anyone else lose video? I don't know. I still see it on the thing. Hopefully it's still there. Uh... All right. So... I'm just going to think about, I'm going to make a new layer just to draw or bring down the opacity just to kind of get, I don't always have to do this, but I'm going to do it right now. He's got a shoulder here just to kind of work it out. It's going to be like this. And then this arm is going to come over here and the dagger is going to come down. And that'll be cool because it doesn't cross this midline. But when it comes over this way, that means when I rotate it over, it'll make this really cool kind of square. And I'll probably make it to where this dagger point goes over his wrist on this side. All right, let's see here. And then this hand will come down like that. There's his elbow and then his wrist and then his little gangly hand right here with a big bag of gold right there and have some coins coming up, whacking him in the face like that. Have a little tunic, a little pompous tunic, have a little, some sleeves underneath and then his little kind of arms. Yep, feels good. Let's do it. So we'll probably do like lots of gold trim and uh, non-armory stuff, but very, very luxurious, rich, hey, people, I'm taxing your brains out, and so I'm going to make sure you guys see that I'm taxing your brains out. So I'm going to do a necklace, a big kind of necklace here, but I'm not going to use crosses, as Mr. Bradius has said. So I'm just going to kind of do... Now, the... You know, I want to, like... My natural inclination is to make these make these necklace pieces and everything else really detailed, but just the style of this uh, deck doesn't lend itself very well to doing really small detail because everything has to be stitch work in the end. So I kind of just have to remember that as I'm drawing. Uh, and I've, and I've, tried, I've tried to be somewhat period correct with a lot of this I mean, give me a break. I mean, uh, I'm drawing with embroidery, and <laughs> so it's not. But I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be somewhat period specific with the clothing of just having like this big drop cloth type thing that goes over the top, a tunic, and then they got a belt. And he's gonna have, uh, he's gonna have like a big paneled tunic that comes over, and then it's got a cross piece like this. And so this will be one color, and then that'll be a matching color. And then vice versa. Vice versa? Vice versa. Uh, vice versa, it'll be kind of like a checkerboard design. And then I'll put some gold trim here. But it'll, I think it'll look really nice when we, uh, when it's, you know, I get to use the different textures of the fabric. And then underneath here, he will have, you know, he could probably have some kind of like ceremonial armor. And we'll give him some shoulder, I don't know what you call those, shoulder pads. Some good old Nakona shoulder pads for all you football players. 
So these would just be some kind of like ceremonial armor that go over his shoulders, but that's about it. Have him some sleeves. Sleeves of some sort. But I feel like that he would have like these, those big puffy. But they didn't really have those big puffy sleeves in the 11th century. I mean, that was very much kind of Tudor-esque uh, uh, garb. So I'm not going to give him those big fluffy kind of like Henry VIII. So I'll just give him these kind of sleeves here. I'll end up doing the... And then I'm going to just bring this opacity down a little bit. No white wigs. Nope, no white wigs. I'm going to bring the opacity down on this one just so I can see what's going on. And then the way that I'm doing these arms is it's not like, it's not like, you know, anatomically correct where you have a, you know, an elbow and then your forearm and then bicep, you know, like that or whatever. It's not like that. The way that after I was looking at all these different figures on this bow tapestry, the, the thing that I'm inspired by on this project, it's literally they come down, they bend it, and it's just this kind of arc. And it's really very, very simple. But I just drew him with no bicep whatsoever, so I'll bring that out. I probably want to switch this like that. Now he's gonna have some kind of, he'll have some kind of glove, gloved hand here, because he's gonna, you know, because he doesn't want to touch people, so he's got to wear his gloves all the time because he doesn't want to touch people, and he's gonna have a dagger in this hand, and so we will take this, and another thing with this style is they had very elongated hands. And then their fingers were very long and basically didn't have any joints. They just kind of were spaghetti fingers that came over. So we'll do a short little, it's probably a little bit too big, short hand guard because it's a dagger. Because this guy doesn't have a sword. He's not doing his own fighting. And it'll come down, a nice little pointy dagger, stick you in the eye with it. And then his fingers come over. There we go. I like that. I don't like his elbow. Let's draw that again. With this kind of style, I always have to keep checking myself because I want, I mean, my, my artist training in me wants to make everything look anatomically correct. Uh, but I... I have to stop myself short because I want it to I want it to really feel like that original bow tapestry. So I kind of have to like I kind of have to like give myself a handicap and <laughs> make it look bad. Let's see. Uh, David Botts asks, I was wondering if you could explain the difference between the table player sub and standard sub. I'm new subscriber to both. The just got my first decks, and I'm loving them. First of all, thanks. I'm glad you're loving them. Uh, let me read your question, then I'm going to start drawing again. Uh, uh, the, table, the, the table players is just one of, my, one of my subscriptions, and there's two basically two tiers with the table players. There's the standard edition and the gilded edition. It's the same cards inside, but one is gilded, and then one is standard. But, however... The perk with the gilded is you get gilded, and I make less of those. And then the perk with the standard edition subscription is that if you're a subscriber, you get a chance to get one of the table player's golden tickets, which we make 25 golden ticket editions every month. Um, and we've started, we used to we used to just gild them in the same color we do the gilding, but now I think starting with this next table player's deck for next one, next month, which I call the bookmark deck because it's got this big foil print on it that's kind of a shape of a bookmark. We're actually doing the golden ticket edition a different gilded color. So that's really the difference. I hope that answers your question. So back to this, I'm drawing his wanting to have like these long gangly fingers because they had these these hands in this were like they were just really long and 
And I want him to feel creepy, too. I want him to feel creepy. So, let's see here. Then have this big bag of gold. Well, what has he got in there? A basketball? Softball? But, I do have to think. That's the way, that's kind of the way they would have drawn it. Just like this weird shape. Then have some coins, some doubloons. Actually, there's this uh, company I follow on Instagram called Shire Post Mint, and they're really cool. They make actually traditional style minted coins. And I uh, and I emailed them and I asked them if they might want to collaborate with this project and make some uh, like actual kind of like 11th century King, you know, Richard the Lionheart coins. And then, like, I have a saying from my Arrows deck that I, uh, I've i used as kind of a motto and sometimes called Aim Small, Shoot Straight. And uh, and I put that in the Joker of the, uh, the Arrows deck a few years ago when I did that. And the Joker in the Arrows deck was uh, Robin Hood, a sculpture of Robin Hood from, uh, it's in Nottingham. And I'm going to see if I can't do something like that with those guys and maybe make a really cool coin. All right, so I'm going to bring this opacity up. I really like this. It's really rough, but this is going to look really good once I do the um, stitch work. Now I'm going to show you I was talking about that dagger. Let me just erase this part on his hand so we can kind of see what's going on. This is going to turn out really well. I think this is, I already like this a lot. I'll probably put some kind of belt on him, but... Uh, uh, but so I'm gonna just duplicate this to kind of give you an idea. But I'm feeling really good about this design. So let's see how his, his see how the dagger, the dagger will kind of go over his forearm on the other side of the card. And so I'll just kind of take this and then erase erase that. Erase that. Good. Good, 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 goody gumdrops. All right. Yeah, I feel good about that. I like that. He seems, I don't know. He seems a little bit too, what's the word? He seems a little bit too buff. I kind of want to make his arms a little bit scrawnier. So I'm going to bring the opacity down just so I can have it. Let's see here. Uh, Daniel Boggs, is there any way to pay for a whole year's worth of subscription at all at once? No, not really. We don't have that. And also, with everything going on right now with the COVID-19 lockdowns, there's so much stuff that's that could possibly be in flux in terms of like um, delays and all that kind of stuff. So I definitely wouldn't want to do anything like a full year thing at this moment just for safety so I'm just going to thin up his arms because I want him to feel a little bit just I don't know wiry like he's a wuss like he can't protect himself he's got to have the old sheriff take care of him there we go uh, let's see, how does the printing work with this one f just full CMYK because of the all the details? Yes. This is definitely a CMYK printed deck. No spot colors. Yeah, I like that. I did he he had he, he does too many upper body workouts. He was doing too much too much no leg day, no leg day. Let's see here. I'm just going to flip this around and get this going. All right. Well, I missed his arm. Let me just go back. Delete. Grab that layer. Oops. I want this layer here. And, man, when I stream, my computer is so slow. Okay, that's what I want. Merge. Duplicate that layer. I'm going to flip it around. First get my background. Oops, I blew it. I duplicated 
not what I wanted to duplicate. Let me go back here. Sorry for my unprofessionalism here. You think I'd never done this before? I guess not. All right, let's try this one more time. Select the back layer, select that layer, and there we go. Perfect. That's what I want. I'm going to go back up to the top. Let me see here. All right, no other questions at this point. So I'm going to merge these two, bring down the opacity. I'm going to start stitching, stitching this boy up. I always start with the face, basically no matter what I'm doing here. So I'm going to find whatever layer in my disorganized layers I've got here. I should have labeled them, but I kind of colorize them. I'm going to start with my brown layer. It's this. It's the kind of brown color that I've been using for all the skin. So at this point, I'm just going to start stitching his face up with the little stitches of the embroidery. Uh, yeah, so this is when it gets really boring. So I apologize if this is boring. But this is how it's done, peeps. Or at least this is how I do it. His mouth. Let me see if there's any questions. Maybe I could distract my brain answering questions. Now with this, I basically just am creating, there's nothing to this, not like a special brush, but I do have, I do have like uh, layer effects on this. It has like a bevel emboss, a texture a texture overlay. So anytime I draw, it automatically creates kind of this stitched look. And if I turned off the layers, I could turn off the effects, you would just see that it's just a black. Let me see. I could turn the effects off and you would see that it's just black. Black lines, just like that. But then I could turn the effects back on and they're back. All right, I'm going to, any updates on the tuck design for these? Uh, no, I haven't had any. The tucks, I've got the standard, the standard edition finished, and that was the important one, because the standard edition, I'm going to have, excuse me while I touch my ear, uh, the standard, I needed to get the standard edition done because the printer who's, who's printing this deck for me is printing the standard edition tuck, because I'm just, I've been ordering more decks as of late, because, um, we have more subscribers, and they're and these seem to be more popular, and so I'm just taking some some work load off my crew and having to stuff a bunch of decks. So they're making the standard edition, and then Clove Street is going to make the the limited edition and gilded editions, well, like real, the book ones that kind of open all the way up. But I need to get the standard edition done because I need to get it sent off and in the works just to make sure. All right, so. I'm going to do his crown, and I need to find, uh, I'm going to make a new layer of this effects, because I want to make, well, I need to, I need to see, let me save this before I crash. I want to see what, how I did King Richard's crown. I, sh I can't remember if I did a black outline or a gold outline. Okay, so I just did a brown outline. So I'll do that same thing with this, so that kind of the motif is the same. So I'm just going to go back to my layer and then just draw his crown. But speaking of the gilded and limited edition, they're going to be pretty sweet. They're going to open up like books. They got an inner, kind of an inner sleeve. And I originally, in the original design that I did, I had like this little die cut bookmark that came off the bottom. But I think because the crew is only making the limited edition and gilded editions, that's only about 800 tuck cases rather than like 3,000. I think we're going to 86 the little die cut bookmark and... We're going to get some actual, I don't know if this is for sure or not, because I need to make sure that we can do it the way I want to do it, and it doesn't fray. 
we're going to get some silk ribbon. Um, we're going to get like red and gold silk ribbon or maybe green. Some silk ribbon and actually have a bookmark that we kind of adhese. I don't know if that's a word or not. Adhese into the into the tuck case and get rid of that little paper die cut bookmark. Because I do know people, there was a few people that had concerns about it ripping, but it wasn't going to rip because I scored it and folded it down. I know how to do this, people. I know how to do it. I'm a debt collector too, people. Let's see here. I'm just going to straighten up. Hit a weird arc on that hair. All right. Draw his little ear back in there. You know, he needs a little bit of a curl because he would have a curl because he's schmarmy. So he would have a stupid little curl back here. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I hate this guy. I hate this guy already. All right, let's uh, make this gold. Going to have lots of gold on this puppy. So, and I say that I make this gold. I just want to make sure I get the, I want to make sure I make the outline, the stitch color of the outlines for each thing, the right color. All right, no more questions? All right. <laughs> He's got a Joe Exotic mullet. Yeah, oh my gosh. That show, I watched like, I think I watched one episode just to see what was going on, and I was like, man, I'm, <laughs> what am I doing with my life? <laughs> I went back to work or something. Oh, Draw his little necklace here. Tiger King, John Sonic. Ridiculous. No, I'm going to stay as far away from that as I can. I don't like novelty stuff. I mean, some of the stuff that I do is novelty, but I don't like current event novelty stuff. It'd be like me doing a COVID-19 deck. When all this is over, we're going to want to forget about all this. Good, looking good. I think I'm really going to like this card. I, mean, I like the other ones, but I really like... I just think all the tech... I think all the different colors that I'll end up using is are going to be really cool. Let me put this little stone in here. Like this. Uh, do you have any ideas for all of your decks this year? Do you have ideas? Yes, I have every deck idea for this year mapped out. Um, it's I'm really interested to see just, especially with the United States Playing Card Company shut down, just how that is going to end up, if that ends up changing any of my plans for this year. Uh for example, like the July deck was supposed to be uh, don't uh, don't tread on me, kind of the continuation deck after the Valley Forge. Like I'm doing this series, this mini series based on flags of the U.S. And so you had the Valley Forge flag, the General HQ, I mean the General Washington HQ flag, which was Valley Forge. Then you had the Don't Tread on Me flag, which is the original Jack Naval Jack flag. Well, not really the Naval Jack because that's the red stripe with the snake. But the original Gadsden flag from, I think, 1778. And I can't really print that. I don't feel like that I could print that at Expert Playing Card Company just because it's a, you know, a very patriotic deck. So, but obviously, United States Playing Card Company is closed at the moment, and so I can't get that in the works. And so the next month, next month's deck in the shorts is going to be the Peter Dash flat. No, not the. It was supposed to be the Peter Dash flash deck, but that's a uh, USB C deck as well. So it's going to be Solstice. Everybody's going to get the Solstice deck a month early, and then the July deck was supposed to be the um, Don't Tread on Me, but it's going to be General Mission because I can't print Don't Tread on Me either at expert 
And then Robin Hood's going to follow that in, uh, in, in uh, August. I can't remember. I'm so I'm so out of it right now. Let me save my work. So if I crash. But what I go back to what I'm saying is, I don't know. I may have to just completely come up with a new deck of cards or something if, you know, depending on when. All right, this, is, this shoulder pad's going to be uh, metal, so I don't want to make the outline. I've got a... I want to do black. Uh, I've got a dark... Let me see, where's my dark? There it is. Uh, a dark black outline for this metal, just so it gives a little bit of differentiation in the material types, which is what you want to do, people. Uh, but I may have to come up with a whole new deck design and concept for the later months of this year, depending on what happens with the United States Playing Card Company. Because I don't want to, to be, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, not produce decks. Because just like everybody else, I got to keep on working. That's good. That's good. I'm feeling good about that. Now, uh, I think I want to make this sleeve a little bit longer. It looks a little bit short. It looks like he's wearing like a, a short sleeve shirt. And I don't want that. Uh I'm going to just bring it a little bit further down his arm. Like that. And then bring it back. Just so it's a little bit more length. That will take away from that skinny arm, but I just wasn't liking that short sleeve. And that also give me, that'll give me kind of a chance to like, let's put like a line down the middle. It'll give me a chance to put a different color kind of section in here for the design. Like he's got stitches or leather straps or something on the side. Maybe like another little panel here. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot more. Look at these cross beams here. No, 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 no. That'll take away from the... Uh, and I'll do something like right in here that's, I'll do like this kind of thing when I do the color, which will look pretty cool. All right. Let's, uh, let's go back. Let's do our black. Is this a black? That's gray. There's our black. Oh, that's a darker gray. We'll make his sleeve here kind of a dark gray. Like that. Yep, 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 yep. Looking good. Give him some kind of elbow patch or something, elbow pad. I've been given, I gave the Sheriff of Nottingham something like that. And then let's go back to our brown. Draw this sleeve over here. Bring it down like the other one. There we go. And let's draw those panels coming down. Match those in the other sleeve. That's good. That's good. Let me see what somebody just said. Uh, Peter Dash Flash Soul says Robin Hood googly eyes, oil stick, oil slick, crystal ground. Yeah. According to the schedule. All right, let's do this glove while it's here in front of my face. I want to put this on top, put this layer on top. Make sure, there we go. All right. My daughter's hacking up something. All right, coming up like that. You know, actually, I'm going to do, I remember... When I do these leather gloves, I remember that I always end up changing. I always end up changing the brown to black because I use like a dark leather texture. So I'm going to do that now. Oops. Paste in place. Selection. 
delete layer fill. Nope. I want to select this black layer fill. There we go. Let's draw the rest of the hand. There's the knuckles. There we go. Let's give us, we'll make like a gold border at the bottom like this. And then make a cuff. I, I've noticed doing these cards that when I just do a solid glove color, it looks really boring. And so I've ended up putting like these different kinds of little bands and stripes. Any, any excuse for me to use different colored fabrics for the uh, textures, uh, I have found that it's better. Maybe he's got like this little... No, he's not going to have armor on his hand. He'll just have these... These wimpy leather gloves. Just go back. Okay, looking good. We control S. A little control S for the peeps out there so we don't lose our work. I opened up that Sheriff of Nottingham file and I think I, I think I erased it, which would not be good. The night that I did that was a big, we had a tornado really close. I think it was the last live I did. And that file was all kinds of corrupted because the power's gone in and out. I probably have to redo it. That's all right. Draw his finger. Yeah, make it longer. And I sketched it. Draw the palm of his hand here, hither. Draw this finger that's back here behind the bag. It's going to be his middle finger, so it's definitely going to be the longest. And then we'll do the same thing for the money bag. Do a black outline for that because we'll use a dark brown texture for the bag. I'm going to erase some of this finger so I can put the bag in front of it. Give a little depth. Looking good. These, are, these cards are so, this style is so fun to do. It's very uh, therapeutic. Okay. Got a little leather strap right here. Good. Now we save. Let's take a look at what we need. We need his arm, the rest of his arm. Nope, it's the wrong layer. Where is that layer? I think it's that one. Yeah, that one. Brush. Well, this layer is getting in my way. I'm going to send it to the back. Okay. Now I can select this layer, get the right one. What am I, an amateur? Feel like it sometimes. All right, let's just finish this arm. Oh, I forgot to do all of the glove paneling as well. Don't forget that, Jackson. That's what makes these cards look cool and give them variety. I've got that wrist panel. And then a smaller panel. And then the one that goes down the back. Saw somebody else chat something. Let me see here. Uh, <laughs> you should do an LE dagger mini sword letter opener instead of a deck coin. Yeah. It seems like there might be a small uh, difference in price, <laughs> production costs in that one. Now I'm going to save this. I can't remember. I think I did. Yeah, I think I erased this Sheriff of Nottingham. That's a shame. This is my Sheriff of Nottingham card. That's no good. I uh, I wanted to see how I did the gold coins, and I know that the Sheriff of Nottingham 
Let me see if I've got a f picture of it. Uh, I don't know. We'll just do, we'll do black. We'll do black outline for the coins. That'll be good. Because that gold on the inside would look really good. see that's an awesome idea for a lord of the rings kickstarter to all kinds of swords in the books oh yeah well for lord of the rings uh, all the aces well all the there's you know there's three decks and all the ace of spades how did i do it i can't remember what i did no the ace of spades are all the ring itself and then all of the ace of hearts from each deck will be uh hero swords and then the Ace of Diamonds from each deck will be hero staffs. Like the wizard staffs. Maybe a Sauron staff. Sauron, not Sauron, but Gandalf and then Radagast. And then the Ace of Clubs. What was the Ace of Clubs? The Ace of Clubs are going to be all like uh, treasure artifacts like Lady Galadriel's vial that she gives Sam the golden belt, the elf stone, things like that. All right, so I think I'm pretty much done. Well, I need to draw his dagger. Can't forget that, peeps. Let's go on this layer here, this black layer, and draw the dagger. What time is it? 9.45. All right, well, I've been lollygagging. But the coloring will go pretty fast. This is what takes the longest Let's get the dagger blade. Like that. There we go. It's kind of wonky jawed. Let's straighten her up a little bit. Because he's not going to have a cheap dagger. He's going to have a very finely crafted dagger because he's taxing everybody's brains out. Robin Hood and Little John running through the forest laughing back and forth. Okay. Alright, so let's delete our sketch. Yep. This is going to look... I'm going to like... This is, this is going to be good. Just checking everything over a little bit to make sure if there's anything that I want to do. Uh... I want to, I may want to add little spheres at the top of his crown just to give him almost like a comical, almost to make him seem like a, like he's a joke or a jester. These stupid little spheres up top. And I can easily delete them if I end up not liking them. All right, let's save. I'm going to group all of these layers that I've been working with. Make sure I got them all. I do not. Okay. Bring that. What's this? It's like I can delete these. Nope. It's, it's how things break, Jackson. You can start deleting stuff. Okay. That's what we want. I'm going to duplicate that folder. I'm going to flip it around. Like that, looking good. I really like that. Now I'm going to come in here and erase the part of the glove that is going to be behind the dagger. So just come in here, erase that, and then erase this one as well. I think that's it. Now i got to erase this little part of the elbow. I'm not going to choose which one I want behind, so I'll take this one and erase that. That's not what I want. I want to erase this part. Okay. And then I want to erase this one. Like that. All right. Good. And then i got to erase this brown. Well, I could just bring this black one to the top. 
like this. Well, I want this layer here. Take it. Gotcha. Well, doesn't want to do it for me here. There we go. Now it's up top. All right. So that's looking good. I'm going to save this before I start doing all the texture work. All right. I got all my fabrics that I'm using, my high scans of my fabric that I scanned in. Uh, and I'm using the same stuff so that everything feels the same throughout the deck. I'm just going to copy and then go back to my Prince John paste. And I really only need to do half it. I'm going to scale this down. Skosh here. And I'm going to put me a mask. I'm going to make sure that this all my textures are outside this folder. Just do some organization here, people. I want this at the bottom, right above my paper, my fabric texture. Yes. I'm going to put a mask on it, fill the mask with black, and then I'm just going to paint in the mask with white everywhere that there's gold. And this is where it's fun and it comes together really quick. Once you got the basis knocked out, Go. It's going to be gold. Necklace will be gold. Like that. And I'll go back and draw these uh, jewels, jewels, or whatever these things are uh, after the fact. He's going to have lots of gold on his clothing. So let's put that in there. All right, goody goody gumdrops here. Looking good. His dagger will be gold, that part. And then let's make this band here gold and that band there gold. And then let's go ahead for good measure and make this border piping on his tunic gold as well. And then his his crew neck t-shirt collar good don't forget his other glove and then this band good 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 good, 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 good. alright let's go find our red did I open my red let's see here open uh, Robin Hood nope I need to go to Sorry, I'm browsing my folders here. Let me go to my scanned in pixels, textures. Sorry, I didn't have this up beforehand. Fabric, red. I got my green open. Okay, red. This is the red I'm using. Prince John. Paste. Let's get it situated where I want it, right there. Make sure it's the bottom. It is. Make a mask. Fill the mask with black. Start painting in where I want red. So we're going to do kind of a checkered board, checkered board thing. Now he is King Richard's brother, so he's going to have red and stuff and gold. But he's not going to have the same heraldry per se because he doesn't want to be his brother. But I definitely want to have red and stuff in there. Maybe. We'll see. I may want to change it. I don't know. The good thing is, is if I want to change I can just change the color. Pretty easily. I mean, I can literally make it whatever I want. If I want to make it, you know, I can just come in here and, uh, you know, change the hue. I can make it whatever. <laughs> this a big teal color. Maybe we should make it different. I don't know. Let's see here. Let's, uh... desaturate a bit let's try that let's see how that feels for a bit but the only thing about that is no I'm gonna go back to red because I'll need to change all the 
I can already tell that this this necklace is kind of getting lost. Let me just clean this up a little bit. It's kind of getting lost that I can see right on this border, so I might end up making this necklace black. I think I'm going to do that, and I may end up making his crown black as well. So I'm just going to take this necklace and use my scalpel, my little Photoshop scalpel here. Uh, I'm going to take that out. And then I'm going to find my black layer. I'm going to paste that on top. I'm going to select the black. Select my black layer. Paste that back on top. Yeah, see? That pops a lot more than when it did with that brown. So I think that's going to be good to pop that necklace off his tunic. or Whatever you want to call it. I'm just looking to see if you guys have any more questions. Uh, okay. All right, so talk about bordering stuff. All right. All right, so the complementary color of red is green, but I don't want to make him look like he's got a Christmas outfit on. So I think I'm going to take this brown. Well, I don't think that he would have brown because he definitely would be more, more hoity than that. I might could go with this kind of really cool floral embroidered gold. It's not as bright as the gold that I'm using for actual gold, but it does create this kind of cool texture. Yeah, we'll give that a try. And it's only going to be those two those two panels on his tunic, so it's not going to be anywhere else. So I'm just going to fill that mask with black, and then I'm going to paint in the mask. Okay, yeah, I like that. It's going to give it a nice texture, and the... Embroidered texture of this gold next to this stitch of kind of this duck cloth red is going to be a nice kind of contrast because this is a very tight threaded pattern. Yep, I like that. I like that. That's going to be good. All right. And so now I want to find my... I have like this silver... I have this silver blue. Where's the silver blue? There's a silver here. We'll take this silver for his shoulder pads. I'm going to make it darker though because this is... I use this for like steel and blades. So I don't want to use it necessarily... For his shoulder. Let me take a drink right quick, sorry. Excuse me. All right, so create me another mask, fill it with black. It's a very simple process, this deck. And I guess that's one of the reasons why I like it so much, is because it's <laughs> it's very therapeutic and simple to kind of execute compared to other ones. Excuse me. I have to remember this nice new mic that I've got. All the sounds that come from my mouth are a little bit louder. So I'm going to darken this up a little bit. I'm just going to do that by putting a another... I don't want to use black. Let's see here. want to use just the same color but just a few shades darker on multiply I'll probably bring it back a little bit too yeah that's good and then what I could do is I can go in here and then erase that on the edge so I can bring back that little band that band but then you still have the same same color 
so it acts like this you, the person knows it's the same material like they know that's the same shoulder pad all right now for his sleeves i have this really cool leather texture that i used for the the cover of the tuck case and I scanned in and it's going to be really cool for those parts of his sleeve I think just to give it a little bit of a difference really MJ's was recorded on this uh sure mic it's a really good mic it's I mean it's I mean, re relatively speaking, it's not that expensive, but I was just using my uh, webcam, and that was just no way, no man, no way, no. I'm gonna fill this another mask, fill it with black, and then go into it and paint that leather in. Oh yeah, I'm gonna like this leathers, these leather sleeves. It'd be a nice contrast. To the tunic. Well, I'm going to make that band a different color. I think I'm going to use my cool, like, hemp stuff that I use. I've got this hemp embroidered fabric that I, it's my favorite for this project. You see, go back to this mask, paint in that. All right. Yep. I like that a lot. This is that embroidered fabric where you at embroider this one so i'm just going to give me a swath of this copy come back i'm so bummed i'm just i'm keep remembering that i completely deleted or that i didn't delete it but that prince that sheriff of nottingham card that i did the last live is all corrupted i'm gonna have to redo that i'm super bummed that's all right though I like drawing, so I'm okay with it. Now, I'm going to save this. I remember last time I was streaming live, I couldn't do this puppet warp for some reason. I'm going to see if it's going to let me this time. See, what I'm going to do is, this is a very small detail, and most people will not notice it, but I'll notice it. So you've got this fabric, this hemp color fabric, and I'm placing it within this part right here. This little band right there. Now, if you look at it, the the fabric direction is like this. And it doesn't necessarily match up with that arc, with the arc in the design. And so what I want to do is match up this, that fabric pattern to match up with this arc so that it reinforces the fact that this was, you know embroidered or crocheted by somebody so i'm just going to make it smaller make that image smaller because this is a really this really bogs your computer down and last time i did this while i was streaming it got mad at me so i'm going to come in here with the puppet warp it creates a mesh and i'm going to pin it up here at the top and pin it at the bottom and then i'm going to pull it in the middle and it's just going to pull that design, that image. And what I want to do is just kind of match uh, match that arc just like that. <laughs> it's not a big de it's not a big detail, but I think it's a detail that helps sell the fact that this is makes it look like actual embroidery. Because if you have it straight, it would throw you off because you'd have the form and shape of this guy's shoulder going one direction. And then you'd have, you'd want the fabric, to, the embroidery to go the same way. I'm just going to paint that back in just like that. Good. I like that. Now, I might be able to get away with just duplicating this. Oops. Can't do that. Flip it. And bring it over here. I'll get rid of my mask. Just so I can see what's going on. Turn it. Yeah, that'll be able to work. Don't tell anybody. 
Don't tell anybody I duplicated it because they would think that I was lazy. Let's see here. I'm just going to color that back in. I feel good about that. Yep, 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 yep. Now I'm going to use this same brown texture that I used for the sleeves for the gloves. Hopefully I made it big enough that it'll reach. Good, 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 looking good. And then for this glove as well. You know, I don't like, okay. I don't like that this leather has a black outline and this leather has a brown. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make his gloves black, like if they were black leather. And I've got this really cool black embroidery that I've been using that I really like. So I'm going to copy this, come back to my prints, paste. It's huge, huge. Huge fabric. Kind of situate it kind of where I want it. All right. Create me another mask. Fill the mask with black. And then paint in, once again, what I want to show. That's much better. One of the things about any type of drawing, even if it's simple like this, one of the things that makes, in terms of executing and making uh, your character and your materials believable is kind of setting a, almost like an art guide or a style guide for yourself and staying with that. So I'm using, you know, with this project, I'm using all of these specific, you know, specific fabrics for everything. Because, you know, when the person that was stitching this in the 11th century was doing this, they had specific fabrics they use. And it's not like they had 150 different types of fabric to represent different colors. And so I want the material. So if it's metal, I use a specific gray. If, I, if it's black, I use this black. If it's a leather, I use this leather, so on and so forth. Um, so while I'm finishing the elbows, I'm gonna I can see that I've missed, did not draw this elbow pad. While I'm drawing this elbow pad, discuss amongst yourselves what color we should make his hair. Should it be ginger headed? Should it be dark headed, blonde? I don't know. You guys. I'm going to color these sleeves in. And while I'm coloring these sleeves in, you guys you guys throw me some suggestions of what you think his hair should be. All right, I want to do these gray, black. We're going to go I don't want to do black. We'll take this gray. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll take this gray tiger stripe. No suit for you. Three years, Justin. I'm just kidding. What was I doing here? Okay, Prince John. Paste. All right, this fabric is pretty large. I want to scale it down a little bit. Create me a new mask. Fill it with black. And then paint in. All right, let's put that on the bottom. Put that on the bottom down here. All right. Oh no, I blew it. There we go. Now this is pretty light, but I'm gonna darken it up a little bit. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just leave it like that. Yeah, that's good. Like that. So let's do the same texture for the elbow pads, but then we'll darken that up. I think he was. I think he was because King Richard, excuse me, 
No, King Richard was redheaded. So I'm guessing his his brother would be the same. Uh, let me open up. Let me save this. Let me just confer uh, what, because if I use, like I said about the visual language, uh, I want to make sure that I use the same color texture fabric for the red hair as I used for Richard the Lionheart because they are brothers and you want to do establish the fact that they are brothers. So we're going to open up King Richard. I know that the only thing you see on King Richard is his beard. Yeah, okay. So I didn't really use a fabric because you can't see any of his hair, but I did use... I'm going to just take this layer. So I've got that color overlay. I'm going to bring it over here. Uh, and then I'm going to use... I'll probably... I'm trying to think of what I want to use. I may use this brown hemp fabric because it'll be a cool hair. And then I can colorize it to be that same hue of orange. Let's give that a gander and see how that turns out. Prince John. Paste. I'm going to rotate this a smidge so it kind of lines up with his hair. Yep. Ah, this is going to work good. And the way I've been doing this, you'll see, is because of this cool pattern. And I've seen a lot in the tapestry that I'm looking at for inspiration. They would kind of make these large kind of vertical stripes to create color. Um, and so that's what I'm going to do with this. Or at least that's what I'm going to think I'm going to do with this. All right. Now I'm going to take this orange color. Why isn't it not letting me select that orange color? I'm going to get this orange color that's CMYK safe. I'm going to do, let's try multiply. It's going to make it too dark. What is going on? Let's see here. Okay. Multiply. Okay, good. Now, what I mean by is, I'll go in here and just paint every other, every other stitch column orange. And it creates this really cool effect that I really like. That's very similar to a lot of the, the way they did some of the solid colors in the original bow tapestry, or however you pronounce the French word. I think it's French. Well, at least that's where it's at. Okay, there we go. I'll come back and clean it up. I can hear you saying, oh, you're going over the lines, you're going over the lines. Yep, 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 I like that. Zoom out a little bit. Let's see. Now, I'm just going to do another layer just in case. I want to make it all orange, but I'm going to do this layer an overlay. It's going to be way too bright, but I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be good. It's going to be a really cool texture. And I'll bring down the opacity a little bit on this bright orange just... Who knows? I don't know. It may look it may look cool. Cause that's what it's about, right? You gotta make it look cool. When I'm zoomed in like this, all these textures are being displayed at full res, and so I am streaming and displaying all these textures at full res. So my computer does not like me in these moments. Bring the opacity down a little bit. 
<laughs> it's kind of tiger strap. No, you weren't. You weren't that far off. You weren't that far off. Uh, I'm an, I'm not a hundred percent sold on it. I don't know if I like it. Uh, I'm gonna let it sit there for a bit. What I probably will end up doing is going back and just making a solid colored orange. But it does create cool movement and direction, and it does mimic. It does kind of hint at his hair. Uh, I'm going to create just a darker color on these elbow patches. Okay, good, good. Want that multiplied. This will be one color. This will be the same color. And then let's go a little bit darker. Another layer on multiply few shades darker when somebody says shades for a little art lesson when somebody says shades that just means you add black tints tints tones and shades tints are adding white tones are adding gray and shades are adding black but that's for painting really and not necessarily for a computer all right so i want to use a different texture brown for the bag that i did for the sleeve so i'm going to go back to my leather that's the one I'm using for the sleeves. Let's find my other leather one, brown fabric. Okay, we're on the home stretch, and it's only 1015. That's good. All I've got left is the bag, the strap, a few panels, and then we're done. This went really well. I'm really pleased with this one. I'm not pleased that I have to redo the Sheriff of Nottingham that all you fine people watch me do. That's okay. I need the practice. And practice is good. I'm just going to paint uh, this bag. Sweet. Feeling good about that. All right. And then let's go ahead and delete... Let's actually give him a cheesy must little tiny little pinstripe mustache to match his brother's facial hair. Or maybe make it like a really a greasy. Yeah. Maybe he's got like a little single soul patch <laughs> that comes off his chin. Cause he can't grow a full beard like his big brother. Let's bring that to the top. Bonk. There we go. And then let's go back and delete King Richard's beard. Good. And that kind of also that also ties in his tiger stripe hair a little bit more too. And unifies the fact that he's got fire red hair. Let's do odd even. I don't ever want to do even number. Okay, all right, let me just check. I need to do the blade, which is my silver. Let's grab, don't need the whole thing, just need a smidgen of it. Copy, Prince John, paste. Let's angle that in the direction of the blade. And then bring that to the bottom of the layers because we don't want it on top create a new mask fill the mask and then paint into the mask good now let's add I think I'm gonna add just a smidge of green because we have the only cool colors technically we have are these black the black, and then this gray on his shoulder pads. So I'm going to add a cool green to his arms to go alongside that cool, the blackness, the cool black of his gloves. And it'll be, and it'll be small enough that it is a nice, kind of a nice little pop of color, of cool color. 
So create me a mask, fill the mask with black, and then paint into the mask. Yeah, see, nice little pop of a different color. It's cool, especially, see, and the cool thing about this is you have this green right next to this red, and it's not so overpowering that it makes it Christmas, but green is the complementary color of red, and so those that green next to that red just subconsciously creates a very pleasing, pleasing um, look. I'm going to make, I'm going to use a little bit of this for the strap just because of the color. And I think that that's it. Close this. Uh, okay. Prince John, paste. Right there. Create a new mask. Fill it with black. Paint into the mask. Yep, 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 yep. Like that. Looks good. Looks real good. All right. So I'm going to have to paint in between his uh, shirt, but that's okay. All right. So now I got to make sense of my horribly disorganized layers over here. I'm going to grab what I think is all of the fabric textures which I try to do all right above the paper. Make those invisible. Yep, that's them. I'm going to duplicate it. Grab. Let me just see here. My background texture is... I'm going to have to do this annoyingly and just match it up manually. Which is super annoying because these paper, these fabric textures that I'm using aren't, they go off the edge of the canvas and so I can't necessarily rotate them easily. So I'm just going to match it up manually here. Just zoom in here, make sure we're all, come on, catch up. There we go. Looks like that is messed up. Okay. All right. Let me come down a little bit. Ooh, it's slow. It's got to catch up, people. The hamsters inside have got to run faster. Okay. Good. Almost there. There's a few parts that I got to clean up that I'm seeing. Let me just smash those right quick. There. There. I forgot his jewels. Can't forget the jewels, people. Clean that up. Just giving it a little pixel. Call this pixel patrol in the biz. Let me zoom in and clean up your mess. I should have done this before I duplicated because now I just have to do it twice. Just cleaning up stuff. And yes, I know I'm probably going to miss some stuff. Don't get mad at me. Throw it at me. Because I will fix it before I send it off. Oops. Don't want to do that. All right. Let's paint these jewels. You know, I think the jewels would be good if we do those green. It'll look good on top of that gold. And I think that it will be really good. So let's paste. Paint a mask. Just one mask. We need one mask and one mask only. And then paint. Green is really nice within this composition. I don't know if that's big enough. Yep, big enough. Bring it up here. Bring it up to there. There we go. All right. Here 
Oops. Do not like me. Catch up here, people. Sorry about that. Jewels. All right. I think that's good. I'll need to come back and clean up some more stuff. And then to finish it off, uh, I'll have to, before we go, I'm going to show you some other stuff that I've been working on for this deck. But know that I've got a color in this area in the middle uh, to finish it off. But I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I like the tiger stripes, actually. So you were right, Mr. Beaver. Uh, I like the tiger stripes. I'm going to keep those. i got to color this in. Let me save this. I'm going to go ahead and open up the index cards because I worked on those. But it's going to take it a few seconds to open because I think the file is like 24 gigs open. I don't know why. Yes, Cheesy Stash is missing on the bottom. Yep, I see that. Thank you, Mr. Odell. Just open up this large format document. It's like 22 gigs because I, have, I haven't flattened any of the layers yet. Yeah, I've got some other stuff missing right there on his elbow. Just some stuff I lost. And also look at his, uh, look at his necklace. See, his necklace is black up here but it's brown down here. So I lost, definitely lost some stuff when I duplicated it over that I'm going to have to fix, but that's okay. Opening, 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 opening. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, just to go back to my good-looking face while we're waiting for it to open. Yeah, so... Uh, that's uh, King, well, that's not King, that's Prince John. Uh, take a swig of water while it's opening. Go back. Um, yeah, let me see if there's any questions. Okay, so here are the index cards. Oh, oh, see, looking down here, this file is 36 gigs open. It's only 113 megabytes the file size is only 113 megabytes, but when it's open, because of all the fabric textures that I haven't flattened, it's 36 gigs when it's open, so it takes a long time to open. But let me show you the index cards. Um, the spades. So we got the spades here. and that, that kind of what I was talking about, that motif of fabrics for specific colors. This kind of goes through, so we got... Let's see, there's a 10, 5, I haven't done the Ace of Spades yet, a 2, then we got, let's see here, uh, hearts, there's the Ace of Hearts, 10, 10 hearts, 9, 6, Cinco, well, Cuatro, I like that four. I like the four a lot. And then we've got the Dismons. The Dismons. There's the Diamonds. There's the 10. Oh my goodness, it's so slow. Seven. Seven. Two. Where we go? The two. And then the clubs finish her off. Got the 10. Uh, the 7. So that's index cards. Let me close that up because it's so huge. I'm going to open up the... Let me see here. I'll show you the back design because you're a captivated audience. I'm not really captivated. You can leave anytime you want. Show you the back design, kind of what I'm, what I did with the back design. So the back design is supposed to be representing of a target, and then these wood legs are like the legs that hold the target up, and then you've got the arrow splitting uh, another arrow, and then you've got the green 
the two different greens and gold, three different greens and gold to represent just the kind of the Kelly green that, you know, the green from Robin Hood. And then you've got kind of the, you know, embellished center of the, uh, oops, embellished center of the target here. Uh, yep. And then I guess finally, let me open up. I'll open up that standard tuck case so you can kind of get a good look of it. Let's see here. Robin Hood standard tuck. Thank you, Brad. I appreciate those kind words. So this is the standard edition tuck case. I think this is the right file. I could be wrong. Yes, this is the standard edition tuck case. Let me turn the dial line on here so we can see it. Maybe I have it. Maybe I don't have it. Well, that's on here, which is really low. There. Yeah, you can't really see it. But this is the standard edition. Uh, this is the leather flap that kind of goes, that tucks in, says aim small, shoot straight, Robin Hood. And you got the edge pages and the little spine, spine ribbon. Then you've got Robin Hood. Um, uh, then everything that's gold, so like the Robin Hood, Robin Hood on the spine, Robin Hood here in the front, and then Robin Hood here, and then aim small, shoot straight. And then probably these little pinstripe lines here. That's all going to be gold foil. Um, so that's the standard tuck case. Uh, yeah, so that's what I've got going on here, man. Uh, I really like Prince. I really like Prince John. I'm super bummed that I lost, that I lost, uh, Sheriff of Nottingham. Super, super sucks. But anyways, uh, let me go back to where you can see me. Anyways, uh, if you guys have any other questions, I can answer them for you. I'm finished drawing. It's 1030. They were a lot smoother. Uh, what color gilding? Uh, the gilding will most likely be um, just, don't get mad at me, Mostly, most likely will be gold just because of the the uh, the traditional kind of theme. However, however, there is a possibility depending on, let me see if I've got my little foil book right here, let me see. If I've got a green that, I've got a green, I've got a green gilding color that is, so I've got a few, I've got a few different greens. Uh, there is a possibility that I might do green, uh, and I'll show you the greens that I've got. It may not be able to show up very well on my camera, but this is a very kind of olive green here. Look at this. This right here is a scratch off. Wouldn't that be cool to do scratch off? No, I'm just kidding, but that's what that is. So this is like an olive green here. This green here is very Kelly greenish. And Kelly green is definitely the green that Robin Hood was. This one here, and then I've had to do this, not looking at it. <laughs> this one here. Just move it around. Those are the greens I'm thinking about. The the tuck case, well, I could do this. <laughs> I could do this right here. <laughs> Look at this. Look at that sparkly. That sparkly green right there. Or there's this one right here. It's got like squares right there. That's too digitally. But anyways, the gilded tuck case is going to be... The gilded tuck case is going to be uh, pretty ornate. So it's going to have lots of like... It's not going to have any... It's going to be all leather and metal or gold. Uh, so... I don't know. It's just going to be a lot of the a lot of the decision on the gilding is going to be what what I end up making for the tuck case. And so I don't know yet. 
the good news is uh, I've got a lot of the cards finished. Oh, I have totally forgot. Let me show you Friar Tuck. I finished Friar Tuck yesterday, and I don't think Parker has posted any pictures of Friar Tuck. But I keep, every time I keep looking at this folder of my cards, I keep looking at that stupid Sheriff of Nottingham and realizing that I didn't have to do it over again. I should probably just stop whining. I like Friar Tuck. He's cool. Let me show you. Here's Friar Tuck. Uh, he's got this, you know, he's big and his big gut coming out. Then he's holding his ale of Trappist. Trappist ale. His Chevis. <laughs> uh, uh, he's got his beer mug. Giving the old blessing. His little Friar Tuck hair. Got the gold cross and the the uh, money bag. Or gold bag. Whatever he wants to keep in there. But there's Friar Tuck. Jack of Spades. Let me see what else I've got here. I haven't done any other females yet. Uh, I've got Richard, Little John, Friar Tuck, Robin Hood, Maid Marian. Uh, I'm going to do, let's see. The other queens are going to be, where's my list? The other queens are going to be uh, Alan Dale's wife. I can't remember what her name is. But he gets married in the story. So, uh, Alan of Dale. And then the other one, the Queen of Diamonds, because the King of Diamonds is the uh, uh, Prince John. Uh, then the Jack of Diamonds is Sheriff of Nottingham. And then, so you got the villains. And then the Queen of Diamonds is going to be the. Uh, uh, her, the, I just call her like the prioress, but she's like a nun. Uh, and then she, she's the one that actually kills, uh, Robin Hood in the end. Is this nun, this prioress? Um, and she's gonna be the, um, um, she's gonna be the queen of diamonds. She kills Robin Hood in the end. And it's funny. It's, it's a really cool part of the story. She bleeds him to death. She doesn't like outright murder him, but she like bleeds him to death. Like Robin Hood comes to her, her monastery or whatever you want to call it, um, for help. And she, and she hates him. And she says, Oh, yes, I'll help you. I'll help you. Um, and then, and then offers to bleed him. And then as he, as she's bleeding him, she basically just keeps bleeding him until he can't, until he basically uh, dies. And it's cool because uh, Little John comes and he's pissed. He's pissed because he realized this lady, this nun, has killed his best friend, Robin Hood. And... He, he asks Robin Hood, well, first of all, Robin Hood asks Little John to put like, lean him up one more time so he can shoot his arrow out the window one more time. And Little John is so ticked. And he, he, said, he asks Robin, after you die, can I burn this place to the ground, basically? So he says that. He says, I want to raise and burn this monastery to the ground. And, and Robin, in true chivalrous fashion, says, no, I have never hurt a fair maiden in my life. Even though she just killed me, I've never heard a fair maiden in my life and I'm not going to start now. So you have to give me your word that you're not going to burn this burn this place to the ground. So that's the story of the nun or the, the prioress. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think it's about it. Anyways, that's it. 10.38, hour and a half. Uh, I love doing these lives. Uh, I appreciate you guys that took time out of your days or nights to come and join us. I appreciate the the questions that you asked. Uh, it's always nice to hang out with you guys via the interwebs. Uh, I really like this deck. Uh, I really like how it's progressing. Uh, and I'm really enjoying the community interaction with you guys this year. It's been really great. Um, excuse me. 
So I hope you guys have a good night. Uh, thanks for hanging out. And if this is your first time here, uh, welcome again. Thanks for coming. I'm going to try to do this next Sunday. Uh, I, I'll probably have all the cards finished by next Sunday. Um, so um, maybe next Sunday we'll see what we're going to do. Uh, probably by that time I'll probably be working on tuck cases or something. So, uh, I'll probably, but I'll at least be able to show you all the cards finished next week. Uh, maybe we could, uh, I don't know, we might could work on the Ace of Spades, I don't know, but I'm, I'm guessing that I'm, I'm probably gonna have everything finished by then, because that's a long time. So, but we'll see. But I thank you again for coming. Uh, have a good night, stay safe, and, uh, take it easy. Have a great, great night. Good night.